Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. It's August 20th, um, 2018. Um, before we get into our agenda, I would like to take one moment. I'll do it now and I'll do it at the end. The next elections. <clears throat> our primary elections are September 4th. We will not have a meeting between now and then, I don't believe. Right, Jerry? Right. Um, I would encourage everyone, highly encourage everyone. Um, people can say in the past that they didn't have a choice. Well, you got seven people Definitely running for yep. state legislator, and you got at least four people running for state senator. Um, so you do have a choice. Um, I would strongly encourage that you get out and vote because um, your vote does matter, really matters. Um, and just want to let you remind everybody that Massachusetts is a state that anybody can vote in the primary. So it's just because you have a, if you're an unenrolled voter or a Green Party or a Democrat or Republican, you can vote in any primaries. And I would highly, highly recommend that you take the time, learn about the candidates, and cast your votes. Um, that's why we've been sending mil millions of our young men and women over into harm's way to give other countries that opportunity um, to vote. So I would I would strongly encourage it. Scott? If, if I could, Mr. Chair, talking with the town clerk today, because of the timing of the primary being on September 4th, it's important to bear in mind if you're out of town for some reason, it is that weekend, you can contact the town clerk for absentee ballot voting, which ends the week prior on it, I believe the Friday prior, but don't quote me on that. But please, again, anybody who's out and about traveling or out of town or traveling and returning to town, that September 4th, you can go to the town clerk and you can get your absentee ballot long beforehand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome, Scotty. Davey, anything? Nope. Okay, so let's hit the agenda. First thing up is Sarah Snyder, who's actually the fourth member of the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> We see Sarah quite often, <laughs> as of late. Sarah? Thank you. Um, so um, I'll, I, I think I'll give a little update on what's happened since the last time I was here on the Riverside Park project. Um, we escaped the clutches of the Massachusetts Historical um, Commission. Um, the, this was the, the archaeological yeah, dig we, requirement? Yeah, they had mandated that we do an archaeological dig, and Sherry and I and Carlos pulled it together, put in a request for a waiver, and we were granted the waiver. Nice. Um, yeah, we had, we, what we, we had to do is take the trees and the picnic tables out of the plan. But um, they didn't really fit in the budget anyway, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that over time, um, People will be donating memorial trees um, to the park, and the trees will come in over time. Um, so, um, but we're very happy because that would um, potentially really delay the project. So we're moving ahead with um, putting the uh, putting together a bid document, um, and with all of the things that have to happen, um, we probably ex would expect to have a contract signed in mid-November, which should be too late to start working on most of the stuff. Landscaping um, they might be able to do stuff along the river at that time, but not the stuff up on the fields. So the uh, stuff up on the fields will happen probably between April 15th and May 15th. But every, all of the, we got all our permits and through all the regulations, and it's just a question of getting it out to bid, getting a contractor, and. We have all our money in place. We're, we're ready to go. Is, is that going to work in the timetable of the, the grant allotment? Yeah. Great. We have to have everything uh, paid for, com substantially completed and paid for by June 30th. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So, yeah. um, so I'm here tonight um, because we've been, we've been very, very fortunate to have um, Sunderland resident Brent Hale um, very generously donate a lot of time to coming up with designs for signs for the park. Um, and so can, have come to um, ask me to approve the design concepts um, that 
Brent has come up with for the park. We need, at, at this point, three types of signs. One is uh, like a gateway sign that just announces the park, and we have to credit the park program on that sign. Um, and so this is this is the proposed design for that. So those are two posts, Sarah, and the sign mm -hmm. bridges it. Okay. Yeah, the, the, there's a bunch of materials that go into it, but they're four by fours with the sleeves over them yeah. on the on the side. Yeah. And it's being printed, and the the white letters the designers have the white letters raised. Oh, nice. Over the yeah, that that'll give it a. Was there yeah, I think like uh, with the you know they they're a little more vivid than they look right yeah. here. Yeah, if you look at like the e in the email, you can see it much better. Yeah, like the projector kind of washes it out. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure our PCs aren't exactly color corrected for, for those of <laughs> you who are yeah. doing that stuff. So, so this would go. Um, um, we we have a problem with where to put this sign. <laughs> Uh, it's, well, got a sign that should go find a place. <laughs> the, no, the, the ideal place would be in the corner of the parking lot where we're the, the we're going to have a pathway mm -hmm. um, starting. Um, the problem is there's a big giant maple tree mm -hmm. standing over that that's in the process of dying, um, and the fear is that it's not a cheap. It's the, probably a twenty five hundred dollar sign. So um, the fear is that it's going to oh, get lens. smashed. Yeah. Um, mm. So, um, so the idea is to put it um, across from where that crosswalk is from the library, um, uh, just kind of behind between the the drive and the baseball field. Um, it's. It's, it's not a perfect location at Does all. Does it it's, point you toward like the, the park itself and kind of it like the it's, gateway? It's and, not a gateway because yeah. that's not where the path starts. But the problem is we don't want to put it up on School Street because that'll it'll kind of overwhelm the Veterans Memorial. We don't yeah. want to compete with that. And that's one gateway. And the other gateway is down at the parking lot and we have the tree there. And then if, if we put it down by the river, it, you know, a lot of people wouldn't see it. Yeah, yeah. We also talked about putting it sort of as you drive into the library lot, mm -hmm. sort of dead up straight ahead. Yeah. But that would kind of interfere with people who stand around the Smart. entrance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and yeah, and then there'd be this bright yellow line through the back yeah. of it, and sure. and the and baseballs would be hitting it. <laughs> It becomes a target. Trees. Right. Exactly. Line becomes a bullseye. Now, if that tree, if that tree does eventually fall, we're doing everything we can to protect that tree because it's the only shade that there is for people watching baseball games. Um, we had it evaluated. It's in um, fair to poor condition, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. we want to keep it going as long as we can, just to have shade for people's safety and health. Um, is, is the tree on town property? Yes. Thank you. Sorry. If it were to fall, we could move the sign. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, moving right along. Or, I don't know, does anybody want to comment on that design? You want to put it back on that one? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and then we have we're going to have along the path three interpretive signs. Um, one's going to be about Mount Sugarloaf. One's oh, going to nice. be about the river, and one's going to be about our the land. Mm -hmm. um, and please, the, the gorgeous sign. Can you um, enlarge that, Sherry? That's two of them. The third one isn't designed yet, but we just want to get your approval for sort of the style and and concept. On Mount Sugarloaf, are you going to have the uh, the Native American uh, um, folklore about? Yeah. Cool. See there, see there, it says, according to North Native American legend, the two peaks of Mount Sugarloaf represented a giant beaver, and he even put the shadow of the beaver's head there, and see? Excellent. Yeah. yeah. And then you got the peregrine falcon. 
And say we say why it's called sugar loaf. And um, you know, there's a little note about what kind mm -hmm. of rock it is and mm -hmm. When we okay. walked that path, I think one of the reasons for the long, kind of narrow sign was it it was kind of sat gently in the landscape mm -hmm. as you went on. So there was some information, but it didn't over, overtake it. Yeah. yeah, it'll be kind of low so it doesn't mm -hmm. block the view um, and kids can see it. And um, and that, that horizontal shape kind of matches the shape of the mountain and the shape of the bridge. Yep. So it kind of... Good, Mr. Chair. So, as 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 a fan and someone who goes to Mountain Sugarloaf a fair amount and recognizes that it didn't always have a building on it, but as one of the most unique buildings in all of the DCR properties, why isn't the building represented? I don't know. I can, I, I, I can ask Brent. Yeah. I kind of liked it without, but we could. Do you think we should have it on there? Asking in the form of a question. Nancy was writing the text more about the nature. Okay. Of course, the building can change. The building can change. So can the mountain, as it has over in Millennium. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh -huh. So, any, any other questions about those designs? And there'll, there'll be one more that talks about the land, the, the Native American woman uh, who sold it to the settlers of the town, and um, the Lake Hitchcock that used to be underwater, and why our farmland is so fertile. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And then um, lastly, there's a, there are wayfinding signs. If you scroll to the left, Sherry, um, and there'll be five of these. Um, you know, key locations. One will be on School Street. Um, at the, at the end of School Street, pointing down, and just at, at either end of the river trail. And they'll just, you know, point people to where they need to go. They'll, they'll give the measurement of the outer loop. The outer loop is three quarters of a mile, and the inner loop is a quarter mile. So we'll put those on the signs. and. Ask people to walk their bike on the um, trail. Oh, smart, yeah. Yeah, and and pick up after pets and um, and and Brent and I went out with the materials. He printed up a, you know some of those arrows and they they look spectacular in the environment. Yeah. Good. And it'll say that at the top it says Sunderland Riverside Park. Oh, like under the top. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right at the cap. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, so we just want uh, you know to get your approval to go ahead. The the, the um, we we that we can make tweaks um, in the design, but we have to have all the specs um, for the materials and everything in the bid document. Yeah. yeah. So so we need to have that finalized in the next couple of weeks. And so the materials are uh, weather resistant, long lasting, high yeah, visibility. Yeah, they're all outdoor. All outdoor. Okay. Outdoor grade. Yeah, we some of the specs on there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you just want to protect them from graffiti mm -hmm. if possible. Yeah, I, I know. Um, whatever. It just takes one person with a spray can. I mean. Right. Yeah, and I don't know. They'll be printed on. Um, Aluminum, the, the, those yeah. ones. So it's been really popular. Aluminum sheet, direct to plate. Yeah. Yep. Um, Stands up to the home as well. Will the town or the park hold all of the digital files for future recreation? Yeah. So we'll, we'll own that. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Good. Um. <clears throat> I don't have any problems with that. You, Scott? No. David? Fabulous branding job. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks to Brent. So, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think they're wonderful. And, but speaking of branding, it made me remember that sometime in the last year or so, wasn't there some talk of some <laughs> town branding and things? There yep. was. Yes. yes. And I, I guess this is going to be some significant signage mm -hmm. in the town. Mm -hmm. and it, 
I think it's really tasteful, and uh, and yes, yeah. and I think it would be interesting to think of that kind of so like building off of that. We, possibly, yeah. I mean, yes. if nothing else has been done. It would be a shame to have a lot of little. Now, to, to your point, hot hot this hot is a, a much better direction than. <laughs> That's very previous. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I did want to ask um, that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we did go through a, a branding project with a consultant. We got a grant, but we had no choice in what consultant we got, uh -huh. and um, it it didn't. The the consultant we got wasn't didn't end up being a good fit, um, uh -huh. and we kind of abandoned that project. Um, but I just wanted to make sure whatever because the, I know he, he came and you have to just you know kind of go through the motions of accepting a design. But I want to make sure that 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 um, that doesn't go down in, in in the records as our official design that the one the that other one right. um, because oh, the minutes of the board of selectmen reflect the positive vote for a particular design yep. they they reflect the mm -hmm. yeah the yep. so is that there something the is there something that um, can be done to formally yeah, not usually <laughs> yeah <laughs> Implementation is another. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other thing. Not use it. Yep. Okay. It's like a security clearance. You get one, you lose one, but you just don't get the information. The same, and I think in bread and doing I this. To. <laughs> he made a real effort to look at the library side and kind of coordinate a little bit with the typeface and with scale. And then I know you were talking about the banners a week ago. You know, I'm trying to use. That kind of repeat that typeface and to get the central and central thing going. So I think there is a nugget of branding in there, but I think it's more in scale with what you actually have and what we have the capacity to do. Got it. Uh, nice, nice unique color palette too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, great. Um, and I just want to mention one other thing. Uh, um, about the park. Um, we had a public forum last Monday night about School Street and um, quite a number of residents came. David was there. Um, and, um, and they said that there's quite a lot of um, activity. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna bring that up in, in my updates, yeah. Yeah, like and um, like kind of un sometimes unsavory activity like it, it, in wee hours of the morning and both in the fields and down in the boat ramp. And um, you might want to consider um, a policy of, uh, you know, dawn to dusk, you know, park open. And we might want to ask the state to, to put that on their sign. Um, Smart. Yeah. And also, uh, a little farther down on our agenda, our police chief will be here. So we, oh, can, we can mention, you know, that. Yeah. yeah, so that that policy should be considered. and. Um, we could put it on the wayfinding signs too, if, um, you know. Yeah, there was good feedback add, from add, folks. Add the, com, add the task, you know, dawn to dusk. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. It was well. I, I can. I'll get to that later okay. in the update section. I'll mention the, some of the other issues. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's good. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Any other questions? So we're gonna. Move to a uh, move to approve the design as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. You voted yes, right? I did. Yes. Aye. Aye. Yeah, aye. You're on my bad my bad ear. <laughs> no, that's I, okay. I thought I heard a yes there. All right. Yes. Next up was the chief coming. Yes. I thought I saw He's him out there. Is he out? Is he out? Hiding in plain oh, sight. Yeah. He's downstairs at the meeting for the uh, car show. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, did so, Sarah uh, want to touch base was, on the donation policy too? Yep, tonight? let's go down. The I haven't done anything more. Oh. Okay, it's back from town council, and there was just one point of clarification that they were asking mm -hmm. for on one of the sections, Sarah. So if you could just take a look at that. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. I didn't okay. uh, I, I think when, when I was here talking about donation policy, there were issues that came up that, that don't have to do with town council, that have to do with do we 
create a parks and rec commission. Yeah. Right, right. Where does it go? We have to work right. through all of that stuff still. Yeah, that's so. true. As a policy, they call out goods and services, which makes perfect sense. Monetary donations. Has the accountant looked at this with respect to yes, creation he has of? Yes, it too. Yep. yep. It's like it's any of the other yep. gift <laughs> accounts. Move to Sorry, I didn't prepare. No, it's okay. Move to accept town council's adoption or recommendations on Riverside Park donation policy. Uh, second. Okay, we have a motion made second to accept the provisions of the uh, donation policy for the Riverside Park. Is there any other discussion? No. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye, please. Aye. Aye. Right. Three zero. No chief yet? All right. Uh, we'll talk about aggregate agreement for electrical. Does anybody want to speak on that? You want to start? Sure. Okay. We'll go front to back. Okay. Um, the, uh, the idea of aggregation is fine. Uh, I understand, uh, Aaron's made it clear, you know, some of the uh, things that he wants to accomplish throughout aggregation. I get why. My problem is the lack of an opt-in option at the beginning of it. You guys had your meeting in June and talked about it. David uh, used the phrase negative consent. And that means without consent, no consent. And that's the problem. No matter how much education you do, people will be defaulted into this program. You really should do it with an affirmation. Make the pitch, sell it, do the education, and have people opt in. That way you know that people are in it because they want to be in it. And the more they can recruit to get in it, maybe the better the deal is. But to default people into it is you know, you're, you're basically going to commit citizens to take money out of their personal accounts and direct it to a vendor of the town's choice without the consent of the individuals. And I think that's a problem. Okay. Thank you, Will. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Um, I came because when I heard about... Um, the proposition that um, the town might be offering this option, um, I, it's something that I've long wanted to do, but haven't felt confident enough um, in my research to be able to do it independently. So when I heard about it, I was so pleased. And I, I just want to say it's something that I really hope will go forward. Thank you. Aaron? I think what Will just described is true of the other source corporation because they choose who they buy their electricity from all the time. They change vendors, they change suppliers. They don't ask our consent first. They tell you after the fact they have to issue that energy label so many times a year by law. But we just have to accept whatever mix they offer us at whatever price. So I see as aggregation giving people more choice not less choice. We're not forcing anybody into accepting this. And let me explain why the law was written as an opt-out rather than an opt-in, because the opt-in suggestion simply wouldn't work. The law was written in 1997 called the um, Electricity um, Revision Act, and was not concerned at all in those days with renewable energy, per se. This, this idea of municipal aggregation with an emphasis on renewable energy came much later, in 2015, when Good Energy cooperated uh, in this venture with Mass Energy Citizens Alliance. So this aggregation with respect to renewable energy is a very recent thing. The 1997 law was strictly concerned with um, offering people a better price to, to encourage a competition. Now, the reason it was written with an opt-out clause 
is because it's sort of a, a catch-22. Suppose you had it with an opt-in clause. Do you want to be part of this? The first question people are going to ask is, how much does it cost? You can't answer that question until you go out to bid. And you can't go out to bid until you know how many people are going to be a part of it. So the way they do it is they, they assume that there's a certain number of people that they can bank on because they have enough experience now to know that the opt-out rate is between 5 and 7 percent, which means the people who want to stay with that program, this aggregation, is about 93 to 95 percent. So they can take that number when they go out to bid and say, this is what we're dealing with. This is a pretty accurate picture. If it's an opt-in program, they can't do that. So that's why it's an opt-out, not because of some nefarious concoction of the solar energy industry, as, the, as has been hinted. It's really the only way it can be made to work. OK, thank you, Ed. Yes, sir. I have been thinking about this whole issue. I actually support <coughs> Um, the current opt-out um, way of setting it up. But I've been trying to think about how is this parallel to other things, and it seems to me, and maybe I'm mixing apples and oranges, however, it seems that there are a number of things, like virtually all the services that the town provides, that are basically neither opt-in nor not opt-out. We vote you folks in, we have town meeting, we vote on the budget, we can come to the finance committee meetings, we can come to these meetings and offer our thoughts, we can read up on it. But basically, you folks decide how our tax dollars are spent, um, subject to town meeting approval. And I don't really see a lot of difference here because I don't get to decide who plows the roads. I may or may not be happy with how they're plowed, I can't go and get somebody else to plow the road I live on. Um, we don't have trash collection so that's <laughs> anymore, so that's kind of moved. But it seems like there's a lot of things, I mean, this whole Riverside project, there are things that we have basically empowered you folks to make some decisions about, and this was voted in, and I approve it, and I, <clears throat> I've read up on it, and people are entitled not to approve it. That's, you know, to, and they can therefore opt out. <clears throat> so it's one of those things where I, I almost feel like if you're going to say, well, it's going to be only an opt in, then maybe we should have everything else be opt in. So maybe you won't get to have the road plowed in front of my house if I decide I want that vendor. And what about fire services and police services? I'm still giving that money. I mean, it's going to Eversource or some other company that's either private or not, could be public. And um, my tax dollars are similarly going to private or public. So to me, it's like my money's going somewhere. I'm empowering somebody and taking responsibility for making some, some um, educating myself and taking some action on that. So. I don't see any reason not to do it this way, especially given the financial implications and really what seems to be non-viability of doing an opt-in. And I have done, I'll just say in closing, I've participated in a lot of different things like mail, um, mailing list cleanups. Mm -hmm. I will tell you right now, opt-in isn't going to work. I totally agree. It just People don't, they don't take the time. I don't take the time. I'm asked, do I want to be on such and such a list? It's like, I don't even, I delete the email half the time until they start sending me annoying messages. People aren't going to take the time to research it and do that. It's <coughs> kind of by default saying it's not going to happen or it's certainly not going to be advantageous because there'll be so few people that we won't be able to negotiate a good deal. So I don't want to sacrifice that either. Thank you. Or Thank you. So I would say in general, I am in favor of trying to go with an a electrical provider that's doing more renewables. So I would definitely um, lean in that direction. But in general, I sort of feel like, you know, when I go to buy heating oil for my house, right, I can choose who I'm going to buy it from and I make my own decision. But for electricity, 
it seems to me, we've all been assigned to Eversource. And ever since deregulation, we have an opportunity to opt out and go to a different provider. But none of us had a chance, none of us had the opportunity to opt in to Eversource, we're given them. So I'm really not sure what the difference is in terms of, so I just wanted to clarify, if I've already opted out to another provider, am I also going to be? No. Okay, so people who already have opted out aren't included in the aggregation. That's correct. And it's people who have Eversource. Right. Who've been, assigned, who've been assigned to Eversource yep. will just be assigned somewhere else and still have the opportunity to opt out as we do now. Is that correct? I, yeah. I, I actually, uh, my, very interesting point that you made, Lauren, because that's, um, there's, there are certain things that cause a lot of discussion and thought. <clears throat> and that's one of the things when, when they did the deregulation, um, we uh, we were put into an opt out opt out program, and if you didn't pick one of the other sources, you got stuck with Northeast Utilities or Western Mass Electric or whoever it was at that time. So that decision was made by our state government. So it wasn't made by town, and they didn't give and and they didn't give us any. Um, Eversource, who we're, we're all got assigned to, if you didn't choose someone else, didn't give us any um, options to look at how we wanted our energy provided. So after thinking about it, um, I agree with what you said. I care. To me, now you have the option, um, if you choose to stay in the program, you can uh, communicate with a board of selectmen because we, we're going to have to sit down with our aggregation company and we're going to have to choose our how, how we're going to want our makeup of, you know, maybe want want to keep jobs local. Or maybe we want, you know, the, the, the people, you know, when they come in and and then if the residents of town of Sunderland don't want to, to have that fee, then they can move on. They can go choose another choice. I've, I've always had a tough time when we buy our electricity for the town, we get some pretty good deals. We, do. Mm -hmm. we get really good deals because we're in a municipality and we, gener we generate, we use a lot more than the average house household. We can't pass those savings on to our, when we buy diesel fuel, we buy our gas, heating oil. We, we, we go out and a lot of times we go out with county bids so we, we're able to save money by the by have or when we buy sand and salt, we do it by county bid. So we're able to save money because we're pooling our resources. Ever since I, deregulation, I've found the whole system to be so confusing, and I actually uh, called Margaret. I think you know yeah. when it started, I said, you know, maybe there's even a service we can provide, <coughs> sort of saying who are the legitimate providers because. I mean, does everyone get you know mm. twenty calls a week about electrical service? And you know, you know, you don't even know. And it turns out there's you know you can go to the website and there's a list of the legitimate providers. But it's um, not easy to sort through. So there is an option now to choose your uh, not the transmission, but who who supplies your electricity. You can so, and that, that's that's not not changing. Right. The only thing we're, the only thing that's so being that's, changed. That's an option now. Yeah. The only thing that's being that. changed. The only thing that's being changed is instead of opting into uh, so EverSource, you're, you're opting into the town's pro program. That's the only difference. You're, you're, you're being, being you're being co-opted into the town's program. That's the only difference, though. That's a big difference. How? Because, yeah. So 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 they're saying now you're going to go to EverSource. Right. This is. This why is, is it, why is it better to put it into a a public owned utility that's guaranteed a profit versus something that's going to do better that that may do better for all the residents may give you cheaper rates and and you able to you 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 have more of a say on where your energy is being bought what's the difference because you're you're co-opting people into it rather than having it be voluntary it hasn't and already been not, isn't that way now actually though? it's you're, you're what you're trying to do is to provide a service to the, to the town that's extra governmental okay to get to what he was saying earlier 
uh, we form a town government to provide fundamental services that are in the intent of which is to actually protect our property and our way of life. Mm -hmm. Public safety, the roads, all of that, right? That's, a, that's what we, that's the Absolutely. idea of government. When government starts to get involved in private transactions, the bill comes to me, the check is written in my name, it's got nothing to do with the town. If the town wants to provide an opportunity to compete in the private market, make it voluntary, not co-optive. Does, isn't the state, doesn't this, uh, and, and this is, and this is I, I hope it, you understand, it's, for me it's a discussion, right. and this is what I've been trying to, on my journey through Alaska, I had a lot of time to think. Yeah, I bet. But, but when, 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 you, when you think about it, well, what's, a, what's right now, regulators said, okay, and, and regulators said you will in, be assigned to Eversource, a for-profit company. Mm -hmm. What's the difference be, now in, in saying it, instead of saying, instead of Eversource, it's ABC. Why isn't it ABC Electrical Company? Why was it chosen? Why was it chosen to be EverSource? Just answer me. Why EverSource? Because they probably were the only one that was operating at the time. The oh no! The, oh no! No, we 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 are buying we are buying electricity all the time from all kinds of uh, different companies. You know, we. So we, the law now is is that you can choose who you want to be your provider. No, well, you it, it, and, and you and you don't lose that you don't lose that option. Right. You can still do that. Right. That's not changing. Right. The only right. thing that's changing is that that is that who you're initially the assigned to. The only thing that's to. changing is that you're going to change whose people providers are. From a per profit for per from a per per from a per per profit right. provider. Right. Yeah. That's that's changing. Yeah. That was assigned by. State government, and we all trust state government to do its best because we talk to our state <laughs> legislators every day, who, who and our governor. I, I mean, I talk to Charlie every day. Who was Speaker of the House when this bill was passed in 1997? I have yeah, no idea. I think it was Tom Finneran. He ended up in jail. You know. Well, so there you go. Every every one of them, right? <laughs> I, I'm I'm just saying, I'm and I I agree with what you you know. What my biggest problems and and why and I think I expressed this to Aaron. I think. My biggest problem as a selectman is that XYZ, my neighbor, XYZ, picks up his bill and goes, what the hell are the selectmen doing now? Picking my, picking my energy provider. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and, and that was my biggest concern. It really was. But, but when I really thought about it, I says, okay, so now we're assigned to Eversource. You want to stay with Eversource, that's fine, go ahead. You, you, you can do that. I have to opt out. Okay. Okay. Are we going to do uh, overrides this way now? What's that? Are we going to do overrides this way now? Where the town takes a vote at town meeting oh, and decides well, what's the right thing to do? And then if you don't like it, you can come to the election and opt out. Vote no. That's, that's not an option, though. No, it's not an option. But that's, but that's the analogy to what you're proposing. That you guys had this conversation in yeah. June about doing the right thing. Yeah. Okay. You might know what the right thing to do for you. You might know what the right thing for you to do. But you shouldn't be making a decision what the right thing for Agreed. everyone else to do. And then put us in a position where we have to opt out. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is, is the... Hmm. I didn't live here back in the day when people went from septic tanks to town sewer and from private wells to town water. Was that an opt-out situation, opt-in? No. Would you have any choice at all? I mean, you, you live on a street where there's town water and town septic. That That's a given, right? You don't have a choice? Yes, ma'am. And so that is done presumably with community health in mind. Um, community, it's it's an aggregate uh, benefit <laughs> well, for, for everybody to 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 have this, this absolutely situation handled by the town, to have the water handled by the town, and I don't really see a difference myself. 
and it doesn't seem to me to be a problem. Scott? Well, I would, if I could, Mr. Chair. It's telling me what to do. Understood, thank you. So there's a, I thought there was a really helpful flow chart that came from our uh, town council. And the first step was uh, obtain legislative vote, which in this town is open town meeting. Uh, begin consultation with DOER is the next step. Prepare aggregation plan and conduct feasibility study, which is the step that we're currently at. The step after that is review and approval of plan by citizens, submit to DPU. Issue requests for proposals, negotiate, award, and enter into contract with supplier. That's the flow chart that the statute allows the Board of Selectmen to do. The legislative body that's annual town meeting allows for, by vote, the town uh, elected officials or appointees thereof to negotiate contracts. The town legislative body, in this case, again, annual town meeting, passed this. We're at the exploratory stage right now, and nothing has been <clears throat> either developed or presented back to the citizens for approval. Correct. And I think it's really important to bear in mind, we're at the contract, we're at the contract with the consultant to develop an aggregation plan. Conceptually, I tend to be a little more, um, conceptually, I tend to uh, uh, walk a little along Will's path with respect to how much we actually go forward with local, municipal, state municipal, federal municipal, uh, removing choice from an individual citizen. That said, we, we sitting at the table right now have been charged by annual town meeting, the legislative body, to explore this. That's the exploration phase that we're at right now. Without anything to present, we're talking about the concept of government interference. As far as I'm concerned, with an open, form, open town meeting form of government, that was the spot to stop this. And it passed. Very, so now, so very now, strongly. By well, that. regardless, it passed. It passed by one vote. We have, we have uh, as elected officials, <clears throat> been warned by the community to explore this. Now, if it all turns to pot, we don't have to accept anything, right? We're we're also the people who signed the contract, or a future board. I just, I just noticed it was just curious that they didn't give us a chance to opt out of paying our bill. I was, and, and, and why I say that is that when, when, we, when we did away with uh, trash pickup in town, we basically said, you can pick whoever, you, you can pick whoever, ever you want, do whatever, you know, however you want to dispose of your trash on your own. I, I would, so... I would use that more of as an analogy more similar to this than town meeting vote that you agree or disagree with or an override vote. I mean, so so you 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 picked who you wanted. The now, just for argument's sake, the the legislation that was cre that created the uh, allowed you to pick your, whoever you're going to use to be your electric supplier. <clears throat> They didn't give you that option. They said you will be assigned to Eversource or Con Ed or whoever that whoever was providing your services. And I guess they just saying that you have to pay for your electricity. So, yes, sir. Um, Scott, I'd like to. I, I, I didn't identify myself. I'm okay. supposed to. I'm Gary Townsend. Living in Falls Road. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Um, the. Stage, there are like five stages or something. Yeah, yeah, in this yeah process. exactly. Yeah. So, the, so the stage after this mm -hmm. is, could you just? Sure. So, that? so yeah, it's, it's a really good question. So the legislative vote, as, as, as described by the attorneys right. in our town, is town meeting, right? right? right. An article passes town meeting, yeah. and then it moves, it moves past town meeting, right. and it lands, exactly. it lands to, it lands to this table. Yeah. The next piece is to find the consultant to begin the development of an aggregation plan. That's the actual stage that we're at right now. Right. That's the discussion point. Okay. After, that, after that aggregation plan is developed, it's not approved by this body. Mm -hmm. The contract for developing the aggregation plan is approved by this body. The aggregation plan then goes out for citizen approval and DPU, DPU approval. That's the state side. Right. 
Okay, so, so, what, so, oh, so I guess that was a question. I was that's the stage. I'm curious what that citizen approval. Sure. What the mechanism means mechanism practice. for that is? It could, I'm assuming it could be a, a combination of public hearings because we're in plan development at that point. Combination of public hearings about the mix, combination of public sessions and information groups. The question I have is: Does it go back to town meeting for the adoption of a plan? It being a contract, I'm, I'm thinking probably not, but I don't want to speak out of turn. Thank you. You're welcome. I had the same question. It's like, what was the mechanic? Sure. What were the mechanics of that? Um, and again, it's important to bear in mind. It's, it's important to bear in mind that every year in those consent articles, multi-year contracts negotiated by the Board of Selectmen or their designees are something that comes up as the annual from the legislative body. Yeah. So if it's a bad contract, we don't sign it. If it's a good contract, we don't sign it. If it's, you know... Bring it out for public input. There's got to be hearings on that. There is a public outreach component to this contract with the consultant. So well, that was one of the questions that maybe Aaron it would help if you were fresh folks. In, in other words, when you get to that point, let's assume it goes forward for sake of argument. We're talking about the mechanics. What methods? A couple of questions. Like what methods do people have to opt out? And then, as a general rule, and uh, you know, we brought up the point where, which is a very valid point. We were not given a choice of with going with Eversource. That was co-opted on us too. And it's also a corporate, a, a, you know, a government sanctioned monopoly basically. I mean, it's not like I can go out and pick a new electricity supplier unless I get solar panels or some other thing. If I, if I but, could, Mr. Chair, and David, I'll take a yeah, no, exception. Okay. Yeah. There, there are DPU <laughs> hearings every single month. Yeah. And the question is what level of public participation are there in those versus vested uh, interest in right. this. So it, to, to think that it happens in, in the in the dark vacuum of a closet in the hearing room, it probably does because nobody shows up. Right. But at least it's a public hearing. Right. And they do we're, we're afforded and we planned, we have to afford by statute that same input. I've been to a handful of Department of Public Utility hearings. They're not well attended. Uh, yeah, good bet. <laughs> when uh, <clears throat> when uh, this assignment that you're talking about happened, before then, the utilities were basically a monopoly. Yeah, they were from re reactor they to were, light. They yep. were government regulated. Their rate structure was set by a, uh, a public utility commission. They had to go in for hearings to apply for it. When you had a transition from a time when there truly was no choice to a time when it was being deregulated, you were defaulted basically to who you had before. Right. That's that's how that evolved. That's the way. I, I mean, it's been a while, and I hadn't thought about it the way you brought it up. But as I recall, that's the way the utilities work then. Now I don't know how how much regulated they are, what they can propose for rate increases, or what the oversight is. It's 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 not a it's not a a, a free market in the sense that. Um, that that they have that they are governed by a. a a state uh, commission that controls how much they can raise their rates by, controls how much profit they can have. On, on, the, on the delivery side, that's yeah. actually the case. Okay. On, on the generation where you actually purchase, if you're buying, if you're, right. if you're, that, buying, that's, you're buying from that's, Hydro that's, Quebec, right. that's a whole other animal. But when, the, when back in the 90s, when this transition happened, the generation side was also regulated, and the profit that these guys could make was 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 also regulated. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll accept your characterization that you were that we were co-opted into you know Eversource or whoever, but that was who our provider was before, and then there was a transition, and now there's more options. Okay. Um, so, uh, you want to get in, you're contemplating getting into this energy business on behalf of the town, providing the town an option, the, a competitive the, option. The, the town at town meeting right. has asked the Board of Selectmen to, invest, to, to investigate. Right, right. Yes. Right. When this all started, I would have said to the Energy Committee that this is a great idea, but I'm not going 
to use the position of the select board to make choices for people and force them to co-opt or force them to opt out. I would never consider telling you and Mary Ellen who you're going to have for a provider. I have too much respect for you. I would say, here's the idea. Let's go for it. If you had done that at town meeting, you would have had 80 people sign up right there. You know? Because it, it passed overwhelmingly. But instead, we're going this route. And well, but, but well, it, it's, this is the only route that's allowed. It, well, it, that's, that, 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 that's, I'm sorry, I interrupted, go but, ahead. No, but, but I, I, and I, I apologize for interrupting you, but that, the, this aggregation, the way we're looking, the only way we, yeah. that, that's allowed, uh, unless, yeah, unless I'm missing right. something, is through this opt-out process. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I know in the same reason that probably Eversource or Western Mass Electric at the time didn't, wasn't adversely affected or they didn't lobby against it when they did the bill is because people, when you have to opt out, as you know, most people don't take the time or effort to look into how they spend their money for some, a service like that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean. So if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not one to advocate for any particular company, but I've worked, I've worked with the local utilities for all of my professional career. It's not the same company. It's a company of less than 3,000 employees. It used to be 30,000 employees. It's a whole nother animal. Company? Eversource. Eversource. It's a whole nother animal than it was. If you, anybody who's tried to deal with customer service, again, I'm not throwing them under the bus, but they've, they've felt that pain of deregulation. There's, it's another animal altogether. They're regulated to a delivery company. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, they're, it's, not, it's not Seabrook to my light bulb anymore. Can I, can I address just that point? Um, my understanding is that the only, first of all, the only thing that's going to change if aggregation gets accepted is just that supply line. That's correct. It's and not the delivery charge. does not keep that money. Correct. They pass that on to whoever they correct. purchase the energy from, whether it's a correct. coal plant or a uh, gas plant or a nuclear plant, whatever. It's just a pass through. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing here with aggregation is having some degree of choice where that pass through goes. Correct. Because right now it's just every source that decides that for us. Mm -hmm. Now we're just asking the selectmen to decide to decide that in the judgment. Well, well the, frankly, the public to decide it. It's a public input and a public plan. It's mm -hmm. not public it's, input, it's, but you the ones that are going to sign, sign a contract. Yes or right. no, with the input of the public. Right. So every source has been making that decision for us all along. Mm -hmm where that power comes from. And now we're saying, let's have a little bit more public input sure. and choice and control over that. Excellent. And we still don't have any control over who to, how it's delivered. Right, right. right. Because but the, the transmission is, is, is yeah. that's, yeah. Right. Yeah. that's where they make their money. You still that's, need wires. That's the money that stays with every source. Right. All those right. other charges right. besides the, the infrastructure. And we don't get to opt out of that, no. even yeah. if we choose another supplier. No. We had, well, to buy, yeah. we had to buy all of our street lights <laughs> back to put the street lights up. Oh, and, and, and trust me. Infrastructure. And, and now, now people call us about like street lights being out. Right. Yes. It's just another level of <laughs> service that I, I don't know, if, Will, if I don't, you know, if we had to do, I mean, it, 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 it was easy not having street lights because they just called the electric light company and the electric light t company took care about it. Now they now they call the town. Hey, we got a street light out, and well, soon to be in the form of service and repair. Right. Right, and we have to service and repair them now. Right, and it's important to bear in mind that model was the original model that's still in service in Westfield, Holyoke, South Hadley, Chicopee, Lawrence, Lowell, where they have municipal electric light departments. That model was the original model that has not changed. And 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 hope and hopefully we'll be able to offer a better product than Warwick. than. Uh, What's been done? I mean, we lower used, maintenance, right? I I, so I don't I, have a problem with that aspect of it. That's not the issue. Uh, it's it's again. I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I mean, I I could read you quotes from Madison and Locke. I, I get the about, philosophical okay? statement. All right, all right. Yep. The other thing is to do the right thing. Um, Aaron said at the June meeting that we're going to make it a little bit easier for people to do the right thing and a little bit harder for people to do the wrong thing. I don't know if you remember that. Okay. 
It's not up to the Energy Committee. It's not up to the Select Board to determine what the right thing for me to do is. Um, there's any number of reasons why somebody might want to stay with their resource. Okay, they might work for them. They might have a family member that works for them. They might have their pension from them. Hold their stuff. You know, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of factors that are involved. The other thing is, is that this idea that, um, that renewables is the solution to all of our problems. And I encourage the select board to look at it. I, I was made aware of this by my brother who uh, works at FERC. And it's an ISO New England report on energy security. It was published this year. And I strongly recommend that you look at it because I don't think people really know what the right thing to do is sure. in terms of what kind of energy we should have and what the impacts are of making these decisions. Again, I'd say leave it up to the individual and don't co-opt people into it. You are leaving it up to the individual, I know. but you know when when uh, Colonial sat here and he said yes, it's going to be free opt-in. I thought, well, great, I don't have an issue. But that again is only after the program is up and running and that you have been put into a position of having a decision made for you and being compelled to take a negative action if you don't want to be involved with it. I've Person. said it. I'm tired. I won't bother you anymore. Never a bother. But uh, I, I, like I said, I would never impose this on anyone. Understood. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your opinion, Will. You're welcome. Well, you actually made me, th well, from our last, you actually made me think about it more. So, thank you. All right. Are we done talking about aggregation tonight? You have to sign a contract if we choose to, yeah, if we I choose mean. Colonial. Well, they've been, okay, uh, discussion, any more discussion about it? Again, we're talking about a consultant for the development of the yeah. plan, not the plan. And that's where we're required to do so. Correct. David, comments? Not at this point. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion. Uh, move to enter the, into the consulting agreement with Colonial Power as has been written and vetted by town council for the development of an aggregation plan. Okay. Second. A motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Three zero. I want to thank everybody for their participation. It's important to hear all sides of it, and uh, we appreciate your coming and sharing your opinions with us. Thank you very much. And I, I would I would recommend that it's, that it's only the beginning. Um, now now when we we will talk to Colonial, we have to do that, and Public then we hearings. have to get we have to, to develop our next steps forward just as much. And, okay. And I'm also interested in sort of the parliamentary process of public approval. What is because public that approval? might get back to some of your points. Yep. Um, Very good. So. And I also I appreciate hearing other sides mm -hmm. of it because I was just like <clears throat> the issues are. I came to learn and hear that. So thank you. Well, you know, I I wish maybe somebody should send a copy of this recording <laughs> to certain people in a city south of here because I think it's important that they see that it's actually okay to debate with other people and just because other people have different opinions <laughs> doesn't make them communists, anti-Americans, um, I could go on and on, you know, I mean this is what it's all about. If I could, it, yeah, go ahead, Scotty. I was going to say that I appreciate the fact that there are more individual citizens here tonight talking about this mm -hmm. that actually vote on the school budgets when it comes budget season and the room's full of budget people and that affects 68 percent of your tax dollars i i and, and just just to, to finish up i don't mean I, that with any snark i mean there's people actually yeah, came out i think that's a good thing statement. that yeah. is a good thing um <coughs> just just so you know i've talked to we the three of us belong to the franklin county selectman's association where selectmen get together and we we talk about stuff we talk about rural development and economic development and all kinds of good good stuff but i've talked to some of the fellow selectmen that towns have voted on it and not one selectman thinks well i wouldn't say one but many selectmen have just the same 
concerns that Will has expressed. It's it's not it's not an um, your your position is well taken, Will. Um, and there's a lot of people that think that think that way. So I, I just I want to say thank you thank you for coming and, and voicing your opinions both on both sides. We appreciate it. Thank you. You're Next welcome. up, um, and the police officers are in the back of the room, so they. Chief, you want to come up forward, please? Yeah. With your cadre of. Uh, With your backup. Your backup, Chief. I, I notice you never pick any small guys, Chief, as your officers. You guys did that. Right, right. <sighs> A small guy with a big pen. <laughs> so, so next we have uh, our chief of police, Eric Demetropoulos, um, Sunderland resident, Chief Eric yes. Demetropoulos, and um, Eric, Chief is going to be bringing forward the names of uh, some part-time police officer appointments. Um, it started maybe 10, 15 years ago, where we asked the chief, the chief at that time to bring his. Um, appointment prospects to the board so that people because we do have TV get an opportunity to see you guys outside of your uh, blues or brown, browns or blacks or whatever color we're wearing on any particular day um, that show that you guys are just normal normal people for the most part um, well, come on, a qualified statement. Yeah, well, <laughs> how many people want to work from uh, 11 at night to 7 in the morning, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, and uh, yeah, it's, it's strange to want to do that. But anyway, so so Chief, uh, your recommendations. Yes, sir. Well, I uh, we missed you at the last meeting, and I uh, hope you had fun. Absolutely. Um, so uh, last meeting, we bought three names. Uh, two of the gentlemen are here this evening. We have uh, Benjamin Drake. And we have uh, Robert Karkoff. Uh, I also bring with, uh, with us uh, this evening Dale uh, Brown. Hey, Dale. Now, uh, these three gentlemen were part of the interview process that I spoke of a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and the sergeant and the staff came back and said these are the, the four candidates that we think will be a great fit. Uh, they've done a great job of that in the past, so why you know, mess with, uh, with, with what's happened? Uh, and I bring these names to you uh, today with these three. I know they did vote on the other two, um, but we wanted to make sure that you came in. Uh, they came in and saw you as well. Uh, so with that, I, I, I deliver you these three gentlemen to go along with the, uh, the other one you did. The only problem, you guys, you have to understand is that you've got tough shoes to follow. Most of, most of, uh, most of our part-time officers get hired, scooped up after uh, a very short period of time. Um, not that I want that not to happen, but um, I also do think there's there's some positives when you stay in the community for a while and get to know the people and the people get to know you. I will say I said it before. I hope when you're on patrol that you're not a, that you're not uh, adverse to rolling down the windows and stopping talking to guys breaking his lawn or get getting to know the people in town. I think that's a very we've always shared that. Ex philosophy with the chief I believe it's okay to get to know the people in town and you know who drives a gray truck um, or the the blue van or, or what cars are on what yard I think that's a very big thing about police and we we, uh, we want you to guys get to know get to know our community um, deal living in the community you'll probably you you know a lot of the, the kids but I, I can just say when I when I was growing up our chief of police was someone that knew all the kids Maybe it was because we caused trouble once in a while. I'm not sure about that. I can't that. imagine. No. Um, Necessity rule, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Is that what it's called? That's what it I, yeah, they, they, get, they always got big terms exactly. for that stuff today. But I, I, I hope you take an opportunity um, you know, to meet the, meet the residents, meet the, meet the children, be positive influences on their, uh, for them to, uh, to uh, see. So. Definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, David, do you have any questions of... Uh, mm. No, I don't think I have any questions. Uh, just you know, probably just to emphasize that point. You know, like it, I know it's a little harder as a part-time officer, but I think getting done, especially these days, the more connection you have with the community, the better. The less chances there are for misunderstandings, and you know, it's it's a tough job. You know? It's a very tough job. So, are you putting forward four names tonight, Chief? Well, I'm just, just adding one. Uh, the other three I, I gave two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, but I again wanted to. 
present all three candidates because the, okay. the other one was present that day. All right, Scott, any questions? Uh, no, we met one of the candidates uh, two weeks ago, and the chief was clear that it was important to bring all of the candidates forward uh, again for this opportunity for the community to see uh, these new, fresh new faces and uh, hopefully meet them on the uh, best possible terms. I would remind the candidates this is a, it's a weird time of year because it's an annual appointment and it's like three quarters of the year and it ends in July and anyway, those are details. So there's only one guy in the department with a multi-year contract and he's, 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 He's that one. Keep an eye on him, will you? Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So uh, make a motion. I'll entertain I'll a motion. Move, move to a, move to a, a point, Mr. Brown, uh, Mr. Drake, Mr. Morin, and is it Karkoff we did last week? Uh, no, Morin was Morin last week. I'm sorry, Mr. Karkoff, uh, as part-time officers as presented, and I want to thank the full-time officers for their time spent in the interview process. Appreciate it. It's, it's a lot of work. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I. I tell you, it makes my job easier, so I'm <laughs> yeah. quite thankful for that. Yeah. Uh, second. All right, I have a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? No. Not hearing any discussion. All those in favor of the appointment of part-time officers as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Gentlemen, we got a 3-0 vote. Your part-time officers. Thanks very much. Thanks. 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 Can I meet you? Thank you, guys. Hopefully, Hopefully nice to see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're enjoying your life. Yeah, right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. On an unrelated topic. Thank you, Chief. Hope we have fun out there. Great. Great to see you. Uh, we had a public forum, if I could, just last last week about the improvements to the street. And there's been a number of um, from the, the residents brought up about sort of keeping an eye on people hanging around down here at the oh. boat ramp. Like yeah. One of the things we were discussing too is putting some signage out there if we can to say, you know, close from like dusk to dawn or something like mm -hmm. that. But yeah. the, the residents have brought up that concern about folks hanging out and, and also speed on the street apparently has, oddly enough- Has picked up? As short, it, well, apparently the, there's been a number of complaints about okay. people driving very fast, especially with them. And one of, cause we're looking at speed limit, yeah. you know, things. In the yeah, definitely. But it's like maybe a speed table or something like that. But it's the track chief of if you build it, they will come. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you get, you know, everyone's going to come that way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Well, and I've seen on the log uh, a lot of the times when the the officers do their their site checks of either this building, the library, or the boat ramp. Yep. I have noticed a car or two, whereas before uh, there wasn't any cars parked at the library overnight or something. So. And the librarian did mention that she had. They're turning off the Wi-Fi now at night, so they yep. think that was yep. one of the issues with somebody that's oh, parking. Hotspot. Hey, I'm gonna sit yep. here and park, you know. So and in and of itself that's not bad, but yeah. you know. <laughs> It'll feed the animals. She's yeah. gonna take away the food. It's like leaving a bird uh, bird food in the, in a bird feeder. <coughs> take away Wi Fi, they're gonna right. <coughs> go hang out hang out at Dunkin' Donuts. What, what's up with that? Ben Drake. What year did you graduate? Uh I think in high school of four. Ithaca College. Oh uh, wait. <laughs> uh, Just pull that out. Well, this on nine. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I saw it. You know, yeah, we actually, yeah. do read them. Contrary yeah. to popular belief, <laughs> and the Air Force guy. My God. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks so much, fellas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's funny, it's funny, David, that you mentioned about the Wi-Fi at the public library. Yep. Yeah. Traveling through uh, Alaska and the Yukon. Yep. yep. Guess where? Guess where most of their people get their internet access? Probably town hall or some town halls, libraries, schools, libraries. Yeah. public. Li no libraries. Yeah. Li libraries. It's like if a town has a public library, it's usually it's it may be one of the only a few yeah. places that actually have internet access, yeah. well, and and they people go to the. Uh, and that's still a complaint here as we go through the infamous Wired West, the final yes. mile. Oh yeah, here in Western Massachusetts. They got it in Yukon. I know. Not a lot, but it's there. Yeah. It's okay. It's probably your only option up there. Uh, Stuckman updates. David? Um, just that we had a good, really good meeting last week on the School Street project. I really got a lot of good, valuable feedback from the town residents, which was nice. The people who live along here that usually, you know, we usually don't hear from. So that was very good. Excellent. And a lot of good design ideas thrown around. And then we had a good meeting on uh, with the zoning board on... Um, dispensaries and other things in the zoning for that that was a good a lot of good feedback and so getting prepared for a public presentation and everything it'll be coming up so there'll be more more on that to come good so it's good 
Good for an off week. Scott? Uh, two items, Mr. Chair. Uh, with respect to the North Main Street reconstruction conversations with uh, Dan Murphy in particular about uh, the exceptions, the reaching out, uh, the template sharing with the engineers, and uh, waiting for the Complete Streets folks uh, in Boston for uh, their feedback. I, I think in my, in my conversation, it wouldn't be unfair to characterize it as recognizing that uh, without uh, the direct feedback here that some of the exceptions that are peer uh, review engineer put forward uh, are likely to be our default position. But again, we're waiting for yeah. he's he's waiting as well as the board as well as our engineering firms are waiting for okay. uh, feedback. The second piece is uh, we are in the um, digesting period of the DEP ruling for mm -hmm. 120 North Main and in that digesting period, there's really not a lot to say and a lot of action to take. So right. the CONSCOM and et cetera, RDI are all looking at what to do. Okay. Um, town Administrator update. Um, what do I have? Um, MAPC has solicited quotes for the streetlight conversion. Uh, seven quotes were received and we're working with real term to narrow it down to three. Uh, models and stuff? brands. I sent it off to you guys as well to take I a look I at. I saw the, the worksheet, yeah. Uh, I'm not looking at any of the contractual work, Mr. Chair. I am concerned and will continue to be concerned to uh, make sure that we have the final approval of cut sheets of what guys to be implemented. We do. That's, yeah, that was. All a, that will be, all design yeah, and stuff will be approved at the local level. Correct. Yeah, because that, that was a con we've had, concern. We've had a very unfortunate retrofit for energy's sake at the elementary school yeah. where we went from high cutoff, high, low visibility fixtures to essentially stadium lighting. And I, I still, it still bugs me to no end. Yeah, yeah. And because it was cheaper <clears throat> and it was the right thing to do and it saves more. But you know what? That's nonsense. It's still a lousy design. It's still too bright. It yep. still negates all the stuff that the original design was meant to do. You could have saved all that energy and you could have done it right. I plan to ensure to be the stick in the mud about it on the street lights. Yeah, no, I, I have the same concerns. And then, <clears throat> you know, you're looking at strictly by cost, but then there's maintenance. Correct. And everything that, you know, this particular model might be cheaper, but is it going to cost us more maintenance down the road? Now? We have to be really cautious yeah. as well. Again, the fixtures are going to be really important, both yep. in spectrum, lighting quality, what's called the, the NEMA spread. They have yeah. to be the right spread. They got to be the right elevation. And the color And there's too. No, nothing yeah. that says that we have to, we have to, uh, um, we have to mount at the same heights. Mm, good point. <laughs> so those things are not direct. That's part of good design. Anyway, sorry, stick in the mud. No, uh, so I. Uh, you're talking about changing I, the character of the streets of the town. Th that's really important. Interestingly enough, nobody's in the room talking about that. I was actually a little surprised that there were no. There was well, I I just know one thing. I if I have questions about a light picture, I'm gonna go talk to Scott Bergeron. So, yep. all right. Um, Anything the, else? Acuity um, will be in tomorrow to do the IT yes. health check. Good. I'm going to be curious to see how that comes out. We did some deed research on the School Street and Bridge Street properties, and we couldn't find any easements other than a reference to the Commonwealth. I, in, in relation to yeah, the sewer line. Yeah, to the sewer line, line there. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that. So I'm not quite sure where you would like me to go with that next. <laughs> we don't, if, we don't have, if we don't have an easement under a piece of state or private property for a piece of municipal infrastructure, do we have to get one? Good question. Yeah, a, right? Excellent I mean, question. Just, just because well, it's I, existing. I was, so, so right. did we did we look in? Did so we looked in the deed? So the the, the, the yeah, parcels. I sent them to you and to Rich to take a look at too. I haven't heard back from okay. Rich just in case I missed anything. Teresa, the assessor, um, also took a yeah. look. Yeah, she looked. I looked, and we sent them off to you and Rich to take a yeah. look. The only reference was to the Commonwealth. Um, and, and like when um, I saw that, I was like, well, is the line in that easement? You know, that was like my first question. And the, com the Commonwealth's property ends outside of the taking of 116. We, we yeah. know if the sewer ties into School Street that we go across one piece of private property right. where everything is conjoined, and then we go across another piece of private property to where it ties into the municipal property. 
This is one of those ones that's sort of lost in the murk. Well, I agree. Time. I, I, yeah. I, used, I used the term during the discussion uh, two weeks ago. You know, it's an unfortunate circumstance that leads us to something <coughs> we have to act on. Right. The question mm -hmm. is, well, what action do we take? We did. We did get the. We did the correspondence from the uh, sewer operator, sewer system operator, yep. that it would be so difficult that. to get to school, to South Main Street. Yes, you mentioned all that. But the maybe issues. it's not as difficult. Anyway, regardless, yes, it may not we, be. Uh, it may not be worth completely walking away from. Okay. We have a lot to think about. We don't yeah, and, and, and don't forget. And don't forget that <clears throat> the sewer plant used to be down here. Exactly. No, I agree with that. Yep. You know, back in the '60s, yep. uh, the wastewater treatment plant used to be down here. Yep. So, yep. so it would make uh, it to me. It makes sense yep. that the this right. Psh, right came straight across. Sure. You can't Again. think about where it is now right. in terms of how it was right. actually constructed. So, That's right. a valid right. point. Yep. Good. Mm -hmm. Anything and else? The other uh, piece of that, as far as the long-term maintenance go, we did include um, installation of a manhole in the capital yes. grant request. Over this side on School Street. So Good. hopefully that yeah. that will help with that. Okay. Get rid of that blind tap. That makes right. perfect sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? That's it. Davy. No. Thank you. Scotty. Uh, we have minutes to approve. Yeah. Um, minutes from the um, eight six eighteen meeting. So moved. Motion made. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. Anything else? All right. So before we sign off, I just want to remind everybody once again, the uh, election, primary election occurs on, and thank you, Secretary of State, for scheduling on September 4th. Yes. That, it still doesn't make sense to me why you would do that, but <laughs> infinite, in the infinite wisdom of the state, uh, Secretary of State, that's what was chosen. So September 4th, primary election. We have seven candidates running for for the uh, state representative seat, and and I'd like just to commend all seven um, that are running. It's been a very interesting race in the fact that it's been a very above board. It, it hasn't been yeah. down in the gutter. Issues. Um, right. So yep. I think David alluded to that earlier about people have sit in the same room and having a difference of opinion conversation I would say say it's, it's nice to see that we can have seven people running for for an office and, and we can basically stay above board um, Scott uh, was when you're done mr. all right so I, I just I just appreciate it because I think I think that only helps it only helps us is as, as voters to become you take the hyperbole out of the uh, discussion and and I think that's important so how to work where do the people stand? What are their opinions? What will they vote for? What are the paths and what they work hard on? Right. So. Check out their information, their websites. I know a number of them are doing you yeah, know, uh, speaking those are engagements good things. and things. So. Those are all good things. Yeah. Scott? If I could, Mr. Chair, as, as we, have, we are clearly focused on uh, the representative seat, it's important to bear in mind there is a very, very Senate. vigorous write-in uh, initiative. Yes. On the Senate side as well. You're, talk, you're talking about four candidates. Yes. Okay. And and I would just recommend that if you are if you are voting that you learn the process right. to write in a candidate, yep. what you have to do. Yep. If you have questions, uh, you can go online and on their websites will tell you how to do it. But if you really want to find out how to do it, call the town clerk and she'll tell you. Right. Call the town clerk and she knows she'll More let you know exactly what you have to do. But I know writing writing campaigns can be difficult. <clears throat> they can be confusing, and I'm just glad I'm not counting votes this year. Yeah, it's not gonna be fun. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's all. I will entertain one last motion. Uh, yes. Motion to adjourn and uh, have a safe holiday weekend. I would uh, second that motion to remind the citizenry that we're moving. We're we're headed toward uh, move-in periods where a lot of our right. <laughs> uh, residents uh, come here to go to school. So <clears throat> our traffic patterns are going to change. They're going to be busier. Yes. And there will be a lot more people walking and biking. So please pay attention. This is quiet summer. And elementary, elementary, elementary secondary yeah. schools are yes. starting also right. soon. All right. So we have a motion made and seconded. Everybody say aye. 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 We are adjourned at uh, 8 o'clock with a 3-0 vote. <laughs>